So on the left, this is Cordoban letter from Shell Cordoban. And on the right, this is Italian made horsebutt leather. It's called culata. Now people get confused if the horsebutt leather is Cordoban. Yeah? Then that's half right. So to explain what is the difference between horsebutt leather and Cordoban is that this Cordoban layer is inside of this horsebutt leather. So to achieve this layer, you need to process this horsebutt leather and you need to shave down. There is a special machine that um, extending drums, they rotate and they shave down this horsebutt leather. And they, the workers experienced, uh, very well experienced and who can, you know, who can see and feel the Cordoban layer stops at a certain point then when he reaches this layer and then they process it further. So this Cordoban is not on the surface of animals. So for example, it's kind of gross but uh, to make you understand this is a human hand, right? So this is the, um, we normally think as a leather, right? And oftentimes all of the leathers are outside of the animal. Alligators also is alligator, so we call it alligator skin, or lizard, we call it lizard skin, and cow hide, you know, cow has a leather, so we process it. But Cordoban is not on the surface of a animal. They are the inside, they are underneath the skin. So they are protected from the outside scratch, so that's why there's always non scratch. and. Of course, they need they glaze it and they process it, so they don't really um, see as a scratched. But uh, they they get this layer from this um, horsebutt leather. That's why they are much more expensive and they are much more durable because this layer has a very good thickness of what normal leather will have, only about 0.2 millimeters. So um, this leather is almost like 1.5, 1.8 millimeters thick, and this whole thickness is completely durable layer. Some people call it this is a membrane, and some people call it it's a non-fibrous layer. But actually, that's a false. Every layer, every la um, the tissue or the animal leathers that you find, if it's non, it's it's if it's um, not human made. It's all fibrous. Yeah. Only the difference is that this is so dense. It's really densely fibered material, I should say. Yeah. And this layer is so dense that it's really durable, much much more durable than normal hides. Yeah. And because it's so dense, um, it doesn't really take the dye easily during the tanning process. But there's always know-how and experiences, and there's a recipe how to do it. So uh, there are several tanneries how to do it. Uh, I believe there's two in Japan and one in US, Horwin, as you guys know, and there's one in Italy, um, Shell Kodoban, and these are recipes are really um, kept in secret, so they they really um, they don't tanneries are usually they are not so open to to others because they they have the secret recipe to produce these leathers. So um, normally leather. It's controversial leather. You, you can only call it skin, but I will from this video. I will just call it leather skin. Doesn't matter. I will just call Cordoban leather. Yeah. So, uh, but I just need to um, technically correct that this is not outside and this is not a skin. This is a layer underneath the skin, and to achieve this. You need to go through several process and it's uh, complicated and it's uh, multiple steps. That's why the Cordoban leather costs a lot more than normal leathers, but it's definitely worth it. So uh, before you invest in this leather skin, sorry not skin, just the leather and layer, uh, I just want to show you guys how it's different from normal leather and I just want to show you uh, a small project and I just want to show you how it's different. Yeah.
So here's the final result. Glues very well with this uh, typical, this is normal household glue or you can call it shoe glue also as well. Glues very well. And this I haven't uh, done review yet. It's called Aquilium uh, 315 glue. Mm -hmm. Which is very nice. I put it in a jar like this and I use spatula to apply this glue and I will do the separate review on this glue and it glued very well also. It sticks very well and I see no problem with it. And the one way, good way you can uh, find it if it's glued well or not is you can just cut it and then you can see the um, cutting uh, the cut section if they're whole, um, they glued well or not. So. Let's see how well uh, the cordovan, how well it cuts, and let's see if the glue hold it right. So, this is an uh, anti cutter, a uh, big size one, and I would like to use this blade because it's a typical blade you find it anywhere. And let's see how well it cuts. Two slices, it cut very well, and as you can see, the cut sections are very clean. And let's see how it well creases. Yeah. Okay, so there was some uh, black tarnish from the lamp, but disregarding that, it creases very well. Yeah. And a lot of guys stamped their letter as well. So let's try cold stamping. So I'll just select a random number and I'll start to stamp it. This is number seven. Stamp. Okay. It stamps so. very well too. It stamps very well. This is cold stamp, so hot stamp is no problem of course. And let's see how it ventures with tokenol as well. 
I'll try to finish the edge with top and all. So I flush cut all the four sides and with this applicator. Apply tokono at one side. And white a little bit and I will just try to burnish with hand slicker. So this is the first coat of tokono burnishing. This is first application of tokono with burnishing. I'll apply second coat not too much, just enough and then wait for a few seconds then you burnish with the slicker This is second coat. This is second coat of Tokono with burnishing. Now I'll try to finish with the edge coat. So first with 150 grit sandpaper, I'll try to roughen it the the cutting section.
this is what it looks like We build the edge. This is the result of first edge coat. And I send it with 500% paper. We we'll apply second coat. and we wait. This is what it looks like after second coat. So this is final result with the edge coat. It finishes really well with the edge coat and again result with tokono. More of a natural finish. So like I showed you everything, um, cordovan is not so difficult to work with. If you make an item with cordovan leather, it lasts much much longer than cowhides and it has a beautiful shine and it finishes wonderfully and it's just a, a great leather to work with. Next video I'm going to make something with cordovan. Um, if you have any idea what is good to be made with cordovan, you can leave in the comments. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Bye-bye.